Hello overclockers, my name is Brownie and welcome to the latest episode of News Weekly. Every Friday we bring together the best gaming and tech stories to keep you up to date. Remember to subscribe if you're enjoying the series so far and let's dive into stories about free games, open betas and a new GPU launch plus much more. So roll that intro. Let's start this episode on a high with this week's free games. Over on the Epic Games Store this week, you can add Rebel Galaxy to your library and save yourself $14.99. If you absolutely love space games, you won't be disappointed in the action-packed gameplay with combat, exploration, discovery and trade all at the edge of the known universe. You can choose your path and make your living as a ruthless space pirate, determined scavenger or peaceful trader, all to upgrade your ship and conquer the cosmos. Rebel Galaxy is available free from the 12th until the 19th of August. Our next free games this week are available through the classic game store GOG. You actually get a complete package of Syndicate Plus, Syndicate Wars and Ultima Underworld 1 and 2. These awesome retro titles were actually removed from the store back in June when the developer EA decided to pull them from digital sale. However, now they are back and you can take a nostalgic trip back to PC gaming during the mid 90s. Syndicate is an isometric strategy game with real-time combat, and Ultima Underworld is a dungeon-crawling RPG. The gameplay might be a little bit dated these days, but they're easy to run and DRM-free, so you can install them on literally any system. Make sure to claim them before this offer ends on the 3rd of September. The next gaming story this week is about Diablo 2 Resurrected. What's going on with the lights? Got food. This upcoming title is a remake of Blizzard's 20 year old action RPG classic and it will launch with updates to the graphics, gameplay, audio and effects. The latest news is that August the 13th marks the start of the early access beta weekend where pre-order customers can access the game for the first time. There's plenty on offer with five different playable classes, multiplayer for up to eight people, the first two acts in the story and the option to take on other players in PvP. If you've not yet bought the game, the open beta weekend starts a week later at 6pm on August the 20th. Progression from the early access test will carry over to the open beta, but not on to the live release on the 23rd of September. However, due to the current situation at Blizzard, some players will be opting to boycott the game in order to show solidarity with the studio's work. Moving on to another open beta, and this time it's for the upcoming zombie shooter, Back for Blood. Did the door just open by itself? Uh, I think so. Is anyone there? There is literally nobody there. Okay, that was weird. <laughs> This spiritual successor to Left 4 Dead has already smashed predictions during the early access to closed beta. SteamDB recorded nearly 100,000 concurrent players enjoying the game last weekend. That's impressive numbers well before launch day. The open beta started on August the 12th and will be available for all players until August 16th. It's completely free and unrestricted with no pre-order required to join. There will be five different cleaners to play as, along with a variety of weapons to slay endless hordes of Ridden. There's a surprising amount of content that will keep you busy all weekend with the option to explore Fort Hope or take on two co-op PvE missions and two PvP maps. The beta even includes Nvidia's DLSS tech, which means you'll get a bit of extra performance from an RTX graphics card. However, the game is pretty easy to run, with the recommended hardware listed as an Intel i5-8400 or AMD Ryzen 7 1800X, with a GTX 970 or Radeon RX 590. Any progress will reset after the open beta ends, so enjoy this short teaser before Back for Blood releases on the 12th of October. Kicking off the hardware chapter at the news is the launch of AMD's brand new Radeon RX 6600 XT graphics card. 
The 6600 XT entered the market on Wednesday the 11th as the most affordable option in AMD's 6000 series lineup and it's the ideal choice for 1080p gaming on a high refresh rate display. It comes with 32 compute units, a super high boost clock speed, 32 megabyte infinity cache and 8 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory. The brand new RDNA2 architecture means the total board power for the card is rated at just 160 watts, meaning it's cool, quiet and power efficient. You can currently purchase or pre-order a selection of cards from ASRock, Asus, Gigabyte, Sapphire, Powercolor and MSI, which are all listed on the Overclockers website. I actually benchmarked and tested the Sapphire Nitro Plus and can confirm that the performance is great even at 1440p. If you want some more info, make sure to go ahead and check out our dedicated video. Ronnie! Shit, I thought I saw something. They're rolling, by the way. Moving on to another hardware launch, and this time it's for this stunning looking PC case right beside me here. The Colink Unity series features attractive full ARGB front panels that you can actually swap out for different designs. There are two styles of cases available, the Adapt or the Nexus, which is this one here. There's ample space for large powerful hardware, including long graphics cards and chunky radiators. The front IO panel has excellent connectivity and cable management is a breeze with the included PSU shroud. The two cases also come pre-installed with a 120mm PWM fan in the front and a Colink Umbra Void 120mm ARGB fan in the rear for great cooling out of the box. Each case currently has three different tempered glass front panels available that you can purchase separately. My personal favourite is actually this radial pattern on the Nexus. Both cases are available right now for $99.95 with additional panels starting at $12.95 each. Right, I see something. I can't see anything. What? Literally there was something there. The final hardware launch this week is the Fantex Glacier 1 240T30. Wait, wait. Where's the sword gone? What is happening today? Anyway, as I was saying, we've got this brand new cooler from Fantex and also the T30 fans. Before you tune out, yes, this is another all-in-one cooler and fan launch, but if you're looking for incredible cooling performance, these components are well worth considering. One of our in-house overclockers experts has been putting the brand new T30 through its paces, and it does indeed provide industrial class performance and quality, just like it says on the box. It has some of the best performance we've ever seen. At the suggested 2000 RPM, it's also surprisingly quiet. The 120mm T30 does come with a retail price of $29.99 or $79.99 for three, but these things are so much heavier than your average fan and it does actually feel like brilliant quality. That's gonna be perfect for those of you that do demand the best. Also, don't worry if you love RGB lighting either. Included in the box are screws to attach Fantex Halo RGB fan frame, which you can purchase separately. Finally, the Glacier 1 240T30 is the same all-in-one cooler, but it has been upgraded with these excellent fans out of the box. You're gonna get top class performance, a touch of RGB lighting, and all for $159.59 on the Overclockers website. Thanks for watching this week's episode of Overclockers News Weekly. I hope that you have a wonderful Friday. Friday? Friday the 13th? Oh no! Like and subscribe! <laughs>